We're gonna go out and mark out the garden. The snow's too deep for my boots. What are you doing today? So today the plan is to not impale my dog. We're gonna go out and mark out the garden. We figure what an 80 by 80 is what we're doing. I think so. So uh, we're doing a fairly large area. What I'd like to do is, is mark it out and flag the tops of these uh, poles <laughs> so that I know the area that I need to clear. That way I can clear that uh, right away and we can get going on it rather than trying to clear up to it and not getting to it in time. That way Caitlin can have her playground ASAP. <laughs> But look at how much we got chopped or yeah, it took a lot cut down. down. A lot more to go. We want to go far enough to see it. Somewhere around here. We got like a decent amount of distance between us and the yard. That way we can still pass in front of vehicles, right? Yep. Ben is still doing zoomies. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> you turkey. Okay, back to our original programming. Where did my tape go? So if we wanted to start about here, uh, these tall ones are for the corner. And the small ones are for like every 25 feet because the tape measure only goes 25 feet. Okay. You want it out far enough so you can actually see it from the window. You're going in that way. <laughs> but then it's going to be, there's going to be um, flood zones out over there. Not after we put in a pond. Once the pond is in there, all the water will accumulate there. <laughs> I thought this is the spot we were putting the garden. We see it. Plus, it gives you that workspace in between because in here we can put in your garden shed where you can put all your pots, all your soils, all your tool, garden tools, the landscape fabric and stuff that stuff that you don't want casting a shadow, yeah. right? So it's on the south side. Okay. Or sorry, it's on the north side. You, okay, I see it now. I do think we should have a path behind the garden. Yeah, okay, we're not short on space. I know, I'm just, I still have that mindset of like, you need to cram it all in. No, we don't need to cram things in. <laughs> okay. We want room. Okay, so, I'll pull them out, put them down, tape measure, while you uh, put the tape on the top of it. Okay, where's the tape? Right here. So that's the Clark Corner. This is your corner post, Caitlin. <laughs> your garden. Nice. So, um, tape measure. I gotta take all these with me. I'm gonna go 80 feet that way, which means I gotta go 25 feet twice, three times, an additional five feet. Okay. Can I get you to carry the, the corner posts? Just, I got too many things I'm trying to hold on to while managing this stupid thing. You don't have to put the tape on it immediately. You got the short one.
Alright, 25 feet. Are we perfectly going south? Like the sun comes from that direction, comes right over top of our heads and lands over there. What are you doing? I don't know, there's something under there they want. What is that? I don't know, it's like an old potato. Oh yeah, remember we tossed the potatoes out here? Dogs are always trying to find something to put in their mouth. Okay, you ready? The next one? Where is my Linus? Where's the other one? Oh, I see it. There's a tree there. We need one of those roller tape measures. Up until this point, all we had was this metal 25 foot measuring tape and it was really hard to get through the forest. Um, so Rob would back up like 25 feet and then he'd have to put a marker and I would come on the other side and keep going. Okay, let go. Oh, don't do this to me now. Duramax Pro. The Dura definitely does not stand for durable. Okay, I guess I'm not retracting it. <laughs> Hey, you want to pull it tight for me? I'm kind of stuck. No, you're not. Yes, I am. <laughs> I, I see you moving your feet quite freely. If we hit the first corner, that means we did a triangle. <laughs> it's so thick in here. Well, job's done. Now it's time to go back inside, warm up, and have some nice hot tea. Well, today's Saturday, February 3rd. We got a lot of snow yesterday, like six to eight inches. So we were just outside actually marking out where the garden was going to go and putting in the corner like little flags so we know where to clear. Super cold out today and we're just kind of warming up with some tea and I've got my kombucha going on the counter here. I'm going to check that right away. It looks really good. It's really bubbly. Still probably like a week away for one and two weeks away for sure for the other one.
Paulinho, ó. So excited. Look what came in the mail today. We're gonna open it. Yes. Awesome. A soil blocker from Indoor Farmer. And Ten more trays. Woohoo! Starting all my seeds. My flowers for the cut flower garden. These are beautiful. They're the most solid heavy duty trays I've ever used. All right, so we decided we were gonna go all in on our seed haul this year. Uh, we have plans to do market gardens, uh, possibly even some u picks and some farm stands. We also had some ideas of doing like an alternative lawn where we did clover and thyme. So it wouldn't ever actually need to be mowed and it would be extremely bee friendly. Uh, we want a lot of flowers, wildflowers, sunflowers, dragon tongue, like a whole bunch of different stuff. Uh, so we just like I said, went all in this year. Uh, anything that we can't plant this year, we got ready for the following year. So I got seeded three trays of onions and some of them are bunching onions, some of them are large white onions, sweet yellow. We've got a tray of celery as well. And this is the grow room setup that I have. Um, a bunch of those metal Amazon shelves with some lights. These are not expensive lights and they've done just fine for me. And then I just have it all going to a central power bar. Soon they'll be full. So here it was time to start potting my cuttings that I took of the spider babies. So this plant actually has quite a history. My mom had a spider plant named Fred and it grew in her windowsill for years and years and years. And then she gave me one of its babies, I guess you could call it. And I've had it for years. It traveled with us the 4,000 kilometers moving across Canada. It survived a hurricane outside and it's still producing many offspring. It's honestly the perfect plant for someone who normally kills houseplants and I really enjoyed sharing it with other people. These are the bleeding hearts. They've rooted quite a lot. Oh, 
I'm doing the Thanksgiving cactus. I'll plant this in a bigger pot. This Thanksgiving cactus actually came, the original came from Rob's grandmother, um, who when she passed away, we adopted her cactus. And this is a cutting from that. The best part about these really cold snowy mornings was just being really cozy inside and planning our garden. We wanted it to be quite a large space, very functional but also very pretty. We put a lot of thought into like the pathways, we wanted to make sure they were four feet wide so we could get a wagon through, and we want to use the natural resources that we've cut down so all of our raised beds will be made out of the logs that we've cut down. This is what we get. How am I supposed to scrape that? Literally like an icicle. My whole car is an icicle. I can't even scrape that or the windshield. I'll be here all night trying to warm this thing up. Look at my They're stuck. Oh no. Oh. All that cracking. Is that like all the cracking sounds you hear? Are those tree icicles melting and falling off? I've never experienced that before. The tops of the trees are just frozen icicles. Love the sound of snowmobiles in the background, don't you? Not particularly. For a stroll with the cat. <laughs> She's purring. She's loving it. Get in. But. Pretangled, just for you. We have a special surprise. We don't have a fence built yet. <laughs> 